Hey everyone and welcome to this workshop from Pattern to Production. My name is Manuel and I'm working in the Clo Europe office based out of Munich as a 3D designer. Before we jump right into the software where we'll demonstrate some tools and the whole process of making a pattern production ready, let me just start by giving a few facts about the DXF pattern format. So the name comes from drawing interchange format or drawing exchange format and it basically enables data interoperability between software programs. It was developed by Autodesk in 1982 and the latest update was in January 2007. Um, the ASDM and AAMA file format that we use in CLO has the grading rules inside the DXF. It is based on the ASCII code and below you can see the 95 printable characters used in the DXF file format. So when we jump to the software now, I would like to start by simply importing uh, my DXF pattern to my workspace. We have different options and the most frequently used one is swap cutting line and sewing line which cuts off the seam allowance automatically. And uh, once it's loaded, I can see that I do have a symmetric sleeve. So let me just link those two sleeves together. And uh, yeah, after I've done this, I will just arrange the pattern pieces around my avatar. And um, yeah, once that is done, I can make use of one of the new features of the 6.0 version and that will be the auto sewing for a simple pattern like this. All seams are automatically recognized and after I push the simulation button and pull we have our first visualization of our pattern. So let's now have a look at making some changes to the pattern piece. Uh, here you can see I use the trace tool to cut and sew at this baseline and after it's cut at this location let me just add a internal line where I want to apply an elastic band afterwards. So now we have three after all and in the property editor simply check the box and you can see directly in 3D that it kind of shrinks together. Uh, for the next part, I just want to add a pleat in the center front with our new pleat tool. Uh, let me just increase the size of my box pleat. And once confirmed, I simply reset the pattern piece and re-simulate and the box pleat is in place. Lastly, let me just add a binding around the neckline. I choose the tool and simply follow all the way around and conclude with a double click so that we also have a finishing up there and uh, here you can see the result. So let's now have a look at uh, the fitting part after I made my design decisions. So what I want to do as a next step is then add a fabric with physical properties to my garment uh, and then examine if this fabric is a match for my design. So I would also um, change the pose of the avatar simply to have uh, something that's a bit more challenging than just the regular A pose. And for example, here we can now turn on the stress map as a first step that shows the pressure exerted on the fabric but that is all clear then next we check the strain map that shows the pressure or the extension of a pattern piece and we have the fit map combined that gives us an indication where there are tight spots but it all looks good for our purposes uh, as a next step what we're going to do is I'm just going to go back to a more neutral pose again uh, in order to continue with the next steps uh, of this workflow. After confirming the fit for one size I would now like to proceed with adding grading and creating multiple size runs. So for that I will simply switch to only my 2D window 
reposition my pattern piece and start by creating my first size group and then add three sizes for the this video i'm just going to name them s m and l and i will select all my pattern pieces and assign them to this size group and then start the grading process where i simply select parts of my pattern piece let's start with the hem and i type in the extension and with the arrow keys i can now use the grading function to add multiple sizes and the part of this video is just sped up a bit in order to keep our viewers not waiting for too long so that we can continue to the next part because in this next part we directly want to make use of the graded sizes that we have created and we want to compare them so currently I have my avatar here in size S and uh, let me just change the pose now again that the arms are a bit spread out and as a first step what I want to do now is I want to pair different avatars for different sizes so in size S this is how it is simulated I have already paired my avatar and I can now record this as a 3d state later for the review for the second size I'm now going to load my avatar in size M which will then correspond to size M and I will do the same for uh, size large so I have three different sizes and I have three different avatars loaded and now I will switch to size M my pattern will directly change and the pattern pieces will expand and once it has expanded you will see that uh, I will have to re-simulate the garment now for this size and just to help the avatar a bit that nothing is inside the body that looks good and now we can record this as a 3d state as well I will do this same now and switch to size large re-simulate again help the garment a bit by pulling it and finally we have now the opportunity to make use of our grading review mode where it's now possible to have all three sizes lined up we see the different length of the garment and so to say the different fit of our dress so let's now have a look at the seam allowance you can select the seam allowance tool and simply draw a box around your pattern pieces automatically there will be the 10 millimeter default seam allowance applied and you can now select certain lines and change the seam allowance individually for the, that area as a next step you would treat the corners by selecting a corner and choosing the correct corner option from the menu in the property editor you have angled corners etc um, available and simply apply them one by one to your pattern pieces after all the corners are applied you go to the notch tool and apply the notches to the points where you want to place the notch in order to make it easier then for the production and lastly what we can do is we can create a sample uh, annotation block for the back piece where you can add a style number pattern name uh, fabric and supplier exactly as you wish in order to get a better overview over my fabric consumption i will now switch to the print layout mode here i will first of all hide my annotation and i have all my pattern pieces and I first of all adjust the roll width to 140 centimeters kind of a standard measurement and now I have the option to nest all patterns 
In this menu, I can choose a buffer spacing between my pattern pieces in the layout, which I will set to 5 mm. And I also choose the option to nest all grading sizes before I hit proceed. The nesting is sped up a bit as well to avoid the waiting time. So once it's done, you get a layout plan of your pattern pieces. You can now go to save image and choose different settings and options which you want to save and export with your layout plan. After that, you hit save and you choose a saving location for that image file that you can use afterwards and hit the save button and this layout plan can now be used to cut your pattern pieces. Let me now assign some garment measures with our POM point of measure tool. So simply click on the top of my center back and the bottom and give the distance a name. Same for the sleeve and ex uh, exactly the same for the chest. For the hem part, I will use the trace tool and uh, make use of this newly uh, developed function where I can trace a certain line as a point of measure. Let me just add a graphic to one of the pattern pieces. And in addition, I will also add a top stitch that we have all components in place that will later on show up in our result, the tech pack that we extract from closet. Let me just highlight one more feature that can be nice to check the silhouette of your garment. This is the schematic render where you get an outline stroke of your garment and have the option to assign different pixel width for the seam line and the internal lines as well as for the top stitching. And of course you can save multiple angles also as a snapshot of your 3D window. If you now would like to export your DXF pattern, you do so by File, Export and choose Pattern Outlines. So then you choose your file name. You have different options to export your DXF pattern. For example, you can choose the DXF AAMA or ASTM format. You can choose a scale and the rotation. And then the different options uh, are to export your file without grading, without baselines. Both of them I leave it unchecked. You can duplicate your notch on the seam allowance. You can swap cutting line and sewing line. I will do this to include my seam allowance. You convert a curve point to a straight point. Uh, in Adobe Illustrator, there's only one type of point. So you want to check this if you want to use the pattern in Illustrator. You can optimize all curve points to reduce the amount in case you have many. And you can export your pattern in a bounding box, either a single bounding box for all your pattern pieces, or you can have separate uh, bounding boxes for each individual pattern piece. Then you hit OK and your pattern is exported. Now let's, as a last step, upload our project to Closet. Once it's processed, you can see that you have a 3D viewport where you can directly share this project file with your production facility, or you can download the tech pack in an Excel format. Once you open it, you will see that you arrive at some snapshots. You also get a cutter's must. You have your different colorways as an overview. You get your graphic placement and also the measurements that we assigned previously to our file in the Clo software. That concludes this workshop from pattern to production. I hope everyone had the chance to get new insights and feel free to check out our other workshops as well.